We'll get it there. All right, so acceleration is given by that model. So we're not looking at a constant acceleration like a free falling object. All right, so we're talking about something that could speed up and slow down at, at particular rates. If each floor spans a height of, three, of, of six meters, find at which floor the elevator will stop. So let's start off with acceleration. A of t would be equal to 1 over 9 times t minus a. Now, right, just to make the algebra a little bit easier, I'm going to distribute that and make it 1 over 9t minus 5 ninths. All right. So for now, again, because we haven't talked about approximation or anything like that, we're just going to say that I'm going to take the antiderivative because the derivative of velocity is acceleration. So the antiderivative of acceleration is velocity. All right. And we are talking about velocity and not only velocity, but also position. So we have to take the antiderivative. So V of T, which would be the antiderivative of A of T, dt, just so you have the notation down, is the antiderivative specifically of 1 over 9 t minus 5 ninths dt. Just making sure. All right. So again, the funky s and the dt serve as your bookends. We're integrating that. So v of t would be 1 over 18 t squared minus 5 ninths times t plus c. So no logs in this one. All right. Increase the exponent by 1, divide by the new exponent. In the case of the first one, it's dividing by 2, which is the same as multiplying by 1 half. So 1 ninth times 1 half is the 1 eighth. The, the second one. So at this point, we want to stop and figure out what c is. Otherwise, our position function is going to have a constant c in it, and that's just going to make this, this, this more complicated. All right, so they're telling us that it's passing the 50th floor with a velocity of negative 8. So I have a velocity, I just don't have a time. They didn't say when the starting time would be, or like at what moment. So what we're going to do is make an assumption, or actually just call it ourselves, and say that time t equals 0, so we're going to let this be the case. Let time t equals 0 be when uh, we're at the 50th floor. Elevator passes 50th floor. All right. Right, so that tells us a couple of things. It tells us, well, the obvious thing is that t is equal to zero, but it also tells us that the velocity at that time t equals zero is going to be negative eight. And the position, which we'll get to in a minute, is the 50th floor, but we don't want to think in terms of floors. We want to think in terms of height. But Yeah, so you're on the 50th floor, you're standing there, the elevator's passing you in the downward direction. Once it start, once it gets to that 50th floor on the way down, that's when you start to climb. All right. What would be the actual height if I'm at the 50th floor? Again, that's 50 times 6, because each floor spans 6 meters. All right, so pretty high ceilings in each floor. All right, so we have all that information. Only two pieces of it are relevant right now. That's this guy and this guy. So, back to blue. V of 0 is negative 8, which is equal to 1 18th 
times 0 squared minus 5 ninths times 0 plus 6. So that cleans up to just negative 8 equals C. And we talked about that last class, again, a week ago. When you, when you know something is initial and, and it's polynomial-based, then, then you know what your C value is, right? So I now know that V of T in particular form is 1 over 18 T squared minus 5 ninths times T and 9 cents. That's that. Let me fix it more. Minus 8. It's like the computer's telling me to go home. All right. Now, if I need to figure out when the elevator is stopping, I can just plug in a 0 for velocity pump. All right. So, calculator. Sounds like a really great resource when it comes to that. But I also need to know at what floor, at which floor it's going to stop. So I, I need the position function. So before I kick over and do stuff on the calculator, let's get let's get all the calculus taken care of. Right? So I'm going to take the antiderivative of my velocity function. So that's going to be 1 over what, 54? t cubed minus 5 18 t squared minus 8t plus a new c. All right. And that's why we stopped and solved for the c in the velocity equation, because once I took the antiderivative again, I get a, a fresh c for the the position function, now I'd have two different C's for two different parts, and it would make things more complicated. All right? I know that S of 0 is equal to 300, so that's just telling me that C is equal to 300. All right, so now I have my position. The internet's going to have a field day with this video. So now I want to figure, I want to do the, the, the non-calculus stuff. I want to do the, uh, the pre-calc. So let's get my velocity into my calculator. And, you know, by all means, if you want, you know, complete the square, use quadratic formula, whatever you like. Uh, we have a quadratic formula program. That sounds like it might come in handy here. So again, this is the result of setting my velocity equation equal to zero. So V of T would be equal to zero. I just can't do it. I just can't write that again. It just looks so awful. So, I have 
two pieces of information. One is relevant, one is not. At rest after 18 seconds. All right, what this tells us is that eight seconds before it got to the 50th floor, it would stop. I don't know if that makes sense based on the, the, the actual physical constraints of the building. If there's only 51 floors, then that's probably not relevant just because I don't think it was only one foot. I mean, I suppose it could be, but it's probably not only one floor away eight seconds prior. But you never know. Um, and also, we would disregard the negative because it, the, the way the phrasing of the question is, we're talking find at which floor the elevator will stop, all right? It implies future, all right? So it's at rest after 18 seconds, all right? So I need the floor. So what I'm going to do here is evaluate my position function, S of T, but evaluate it for 18. And that'll tell me the actual height after eight, uh, 18 seconds, all right? This position model references time from zero and height from zero. So every measure that we're given is going from the ground up, all right? So I just need to pop this into my position model, which, eh. well, that part of, oh, I was looking at the wrong thing. This part is easy enough. I, I guess I just have to do it. One over 54. If I had the equation typed in, then I would evaluate it differently, but I didn't. So. Huh. This part of the process is like the longest part. Huge. Uh, so 174 meters. It asks what floor though, right? So I divide this bad boy by six. And what do we get there? 29th? 29th floor. All right, so that would tell us that the negative eight would really not make sense if there was only like 51 or 52 floors in the building, or at least most likely not make sense, because we're covering, we're at, we're at over 18 seconds, we're covering 21 floors. So it's roughly half that, you would think, I mean, it's, it's still a fluctuating acceleration, but you would think somewhere in the neighborhood of like 10 floors within that eight seconds. Uh, so yeah, probably not, even if, even if we could allow for negative time, if, unless the building is really tall, uh, much taller than 50, uh, 50 stories, then uh, then we would be disregarding it. Okay, so this, uh, that was what number six.